What's going on? Chuck Nunface here. Today we're going to talk about this guy on the table right now. This is the Les George Knives, V-E-C-P, or VSIP, which means uh, Value Engineering Change Proposal. All right, so this is a mid-tech knife, okay? And the term mid-tech has gotten pretty muddy over the years, but a lot of different definitions of what people would consider mid-tech, but this is essentially all machined um, here in the United States and uh, finished and hand-built and hand-finished by Les George himself. So he may outsource some of the parts uh, to, US, uh, to US manufacturers and OEMs, but he does finish everything else here in the States. Um, and so he does that, uh, you know, he has his full custom line and then he has his mid-tech line. And then of course he has some production models out there. ZT did one with the 0909, I believe. And then Spartan Blades has one with their, uh, their bronze line, I believe it is, the Taiwan-made bronze line, which is called the Astor, or Aster. And this is, of course, uh, the mid-tech version that he makes in his shop, um, but more, I would say, you know, value-oriented in the sense that it's less than his customs, but, you know, it's gonna be more than just a regular production model would be. Uh, in any case, if you go back, you may remember I did a video, and I'll actually link it in the description of I kind of did a head-to-head -head battle between this knife right here and the McNeese uh, Mac PM2 um, and kind of the pros and cons of both. And I thought the Les George actually edged it out just a little bit. You want to go back and rewatch that video. Um, I had this whole point system and it's kind of something I want to do again um, with some other knives, but I haven't, haven't quite gotten around to that. Um, and I ended up, even though I liked it better, I ended up uh, selling that one. I moved it along down the line and um, I hung on to my, my Mac 2. But since that, and being a knife addict and everything else, I've, I actually went ahead and, and sold the Mac 2 as well. Um, but I kind of wanted another one of these. And so when my buddy had one available, we worked out a deal and uh, went and picked it up again. Um, so in any case, going to a few, that's the background right there, going to some stats. It does have a 3.5 inch blade. And it's about, let's see if we can get the overall length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. About eight and a half inches long overall, weighing in at about 5.6 ounces. Um, it does have dual thumb studs, uh, kind of typical with Les George. He'll do one thumb stud a little bit bigger than the other one, but it doesn't mean you can't spidey flick it or something like that. I'm not very good at that uh, with this model, so I'm not gonna you know waste any time doing it, but flicks out very easily. Um, we'll do a little size comparison right now. Real quick, we'll compare it to the, another Les George. Well, if I can get it open, that's a little embarrassing. If I can get it open, uh, the Les George Talos. So it's gonna be smaller than the Mid-Tech Talos. This has about a 3.7 inch blade length. Um, and let's see, we'll go ahead and compare it to the Ontario Rat Number One. So it's gonna be a little smaller than the rat number one. The rat, rat number one has a pretty big handle and everything else, a pretty big blade as well, but the blade's gonna be basically the same size. Um, let's see what else we have here. We're gonna do the Spyderco Native 5. So it's gonna be smaller, or larger than the Native 5, I should say. Go ahead and do the Chris Reeve Knives Large Sabenza. Definitely fits into that same size category as the Large Sabenza, maybe a tad shorter overall. Uh, a little broader in blade, as you can see. Uh, let's see here. We'll do the Emerson Knives uh, A100, sporting that green micarta, factory green micarta. So kind of in the same vein as that Emerson as well. Go ahead and do a Hinderer XM18. Definitely, you're kind of getting a trend here. It kind of fits in that 3.5 inch blade length EDC. Gonna be a little larger EDC for some, uh, smaller for others, but you know, it's, it's in that sweet spot for a lot of people, that 3.5 inch blade length, um, as far as, you know, all of that goes. So there's the size comparisons right there. Kind of going back to this uh, Talos as well, you'll see he uses that same style thumb stud on the Talos as he does on the V-SIP. All right, so that's just kind of how he uses it. This one has a fantastic action. Now the one I had, it was a little bit stiffer. I went ahead and cleaned it and everything else, but the action wasn't nearly as smooth as this one. Now the guy I got it from, he fiddled with it and he adjusted. I would imagine he made some tension, lock bar tension adjustments, as well as, um, 
uh, you know, just kind of dialed in the pivot exactly the way you wanted it. It feels like it would have lock rock. It really does, or not lock rock, but a uh, uh, lock blade play. But it doesn't have that at all. Um, you really think with the way how loosey goosey the action is that it would be a little bit, um, a little bit loose, but it really is, and it's just perfect. Um, he did a really good job. My friend Scott did a really good job kind of dialing this one in. It's got that nice stone wash finish on the blade and that milling pattern right there. So this is the sweet milling pattern that he does with those lines right there. He has a couple different versions. He has a plain Jane, he has the morph, uh, a couple different versions as far as the milling goes. Pretty standard pocket clip, nothing fancy right there, but very effective. Um, not deep carry, obviously. I'm not a huge fan of deep carry pop pocket clips, so that doesn't bother me at all. I mean, it's very similar to what you would find on, you know, a Rick Hinderer knife right there as far as the pocket clip goes. Um, you know, it's really, it's, it's very simple. Nothing crazy. Oh, well, that's not a good example on the Emerson right there because that's a deep carry. But a standard Emerson clip, a lot of your ZT clips, Hinderer, it's going to be very similar to that. Um, so, you know, it, it's got great tension. It's very effective. Um, I like this style pocket clip. It's very simple. I like it a lot. Um, as far as ergonomics go, feels great in the hand. It's, it's substantial in the hand. It's got a little bit of extra real estate towards the end. And so that was one of the things that I really liked about the Mac 2, you know, when I was doing the head to head on this one, is it did such a good job of, of blade to handle ratio, if that's something that you're really, you're really into. I mean, it was basically a 3.5 inch blade with a 3.5 inch handle and everything snugged up perfectly. This one's not like that. It's got some extra real estate on the end, but it feels so good in the hand. You know, that's why, you know, I was kind of saying it was so nice I had to get it twice. Um, you know, this this knife, it's just, it, it, it definitely, when you put it in your pocket and you feel it and you carry it and you put it to use, definitely feels like it's ready to do some work. You know, that, that blade right there is a, it's a flat ground CTX XHP blade, which I think is criminally underutilized. Um, as far as knife, knife steels go. I love CTS XHP um, and every knife that I've ever had it in. It just, it holds a great edge. It sharpens really well. It takes a nice polish. If you want to do a mirror, mirror polish on the blade or on your edge. Uh, I mean, I just really like CTS XHP. In fact, if I see a knife offered in that, I'm more likely uh, to pull the trigger on it if it's got XHP. So that's something, that's a steel that, that Les George really likes to use. Um, in his, I think he uses it in his customs, almost exclusively, he uses it in the mid-techs as far as I've seen, almost exclusively he uses XHP. And even on the uh, the production model with Spartan Blades, um, those are CTS XHP as well. You know, it's that kind of stainless D2, uh, tougher 440C, but I mean, Mike Christie has a great video on XHP that you should go look up and check out. Um, where he kind of goes into the benefits of it. It's got a nice grain structure. Everything about it, I think, just lends itself really well to a, a knife steel. Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's right up there with S90V as far as uh, your stainless steels go. Um, you know, these, typically, he does these in runs. They're not always available. Um, he, they're not always available for for use or more for purchase. He does them in different runs. But... Uh, you know, when they become available, they generally they're they're going to be at your usual suspects. I think he sells some on his website, but you're going to be able to get them at places like DLT and probably Blade HQ, Knife Center, places like that, uh, where you can go ahead and pick these up. So I think he's working. You know, this is the V2. He did a V1 in both a thumb stud and flipper. Uh, did a V2, I believe, in a flipper also. I don't know if I saw any in a flipper, but I would definitely prefer the thumb stud anyway. Um, and then I think he's working on the third version, which may be a button lock. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it might be a button lock. I know he is working on a, a button lock model right now. Oh, it should be noted that this runs on phosphor bronze washers. Don't know if you can see that in there, but not on bearings, but it's got a fantastic action. Like I said, my friend Scott tuned this up really well. It's basically drop shut if that's important to you. Um, but yeah, it's got a really nice, smooth, smooth action. One thing that if I could find a complaint on this, you know, that jimping, it's not really a complaint, but it's not super aggressive. Um, doesn't really do a whole lot to kind of lock your, your thumb in there because it's, it's rounded off. But I mean, that really is a non-issue. Non the one thing that I would say would be this little point right here. It's not dangerous, but you can feel it. 
you can definitely feel it right there when you put your thumb in. I've never cut myself, but I would imagine as subsequent sharpenings, you know, that would get a little bit closer and it might get a little bit more dangerous as time wore on. Um, I think maybe a very simple solution is if you didn't want to drop the point down any more than that, you could very easily just kind of kick this out just a degree or two, this, uh, this butt right here, and you would have that, you would have that uh, tip covered. So just something to kind of keep in mind. Like I say, it's never been an issue, but something that you should be aware of. Um, in any case, that's going to do it for me. Go ahead and uh, like the video, subscribe. If you haven't done so already, I definitely would appreciate it. Hit that little subscribe button in the bottom corner right there. I, would, I, I certainly appreciate that. It definitely helps out the channel. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, go ahead and share it if you can. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more in the upcoming days. I'll get some stuff out for you. Thanks a lot, y'all.